Hello, Nuggets. Uh, am I recording? Yes. Okay. So I wanted to do... This is probably going to be the last circumcision update for a while, just because I went to the doctor, and um, I think I'm done. I don't think... I'll, I'll do an update if something happens, but I really don't see it. My, I have another appointment with the doctor in a year's time, so that should tell you he thinks we're done too. Um, so I had a few questions for him. Uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't a great post-op. Because it was just like, I don't know, I just wasn't present or something. I didn't ask all of the right questions. But I do have an answer to a few things. So uh, I spoke to him about the fact that I wasn't feeling as much pleasure. It just, you know, the, the only sensitivity I have or, or majority of the sensitivity I have is negative sensitivity. It feels uncomfortable. And so the, uh, I told him that I'd masturbated. I just, the the... It wasn't even so much the desire overwhelmed me. It was the curiosity overwhelmed me. I wonder what the fuck does this feel like? Um, I told him, really, I didn't really enjoy it very much. I was like, this is like kind of crappy. And he said there's a number of limiting factors. So if you uh, are about at my stage and you've just masturbated and you're like, that wasn't fun. What does that mean? There's some things that suggest that it could get a lot better. And here's, here's what they are. Firstly, you're not healed. It actually takes a lot longer to heal than it looks. So you can might look at your penis and say, yeah, I think I'm good. And in general, I'm not as sensitive, so I'm healed. You're not. There's a lot of dead nerve endings in there. Um, it needs to recuperate, and that can take months. It can take a few months before you get full feeling back. So that's number one. The second thing, thing is that you don't have the technique down. Uh, whether you're having sex or masturbating, you don't quite know how to use it again because you haven't had to try and pleasure yourself in this particular manner before, right? So practice makes perfect. You just need to get better at that, you know, and eventually it will come and you'll be able to, <laughs> eventually it will come. So you just need to work basically with what you have and get better at it. Um, so there's, hang on, let me check if I got everything there. I got, uh, you've got to work with it. It's not quite fully. Oh yeah, the third thing was, um, he said, because you're still feeling sensitive and it's not always positive sensitivity, it's, uh, well, isn't it? when would it be? But it's, it's kind of a negative feeling. And because you know you're healing subconsciously, he said you're almost certainly not as committed to pleasuring, to getting, seeking pleasure. So if you're masturbating or if you're having sex, you're probably doing it a little lighter than you normally would. And that's true, right? I'm, I'm still delicate around the thing. He said, so therefore, you're just not going to enjoy it as much. That will come back. As you get more confident, uh, you won't be so delicate with it, and you'll be able to, you know, a attack, <laughs> whatever whatever that means, you know, whether you're having, you know, a bit more active sex or you're masturbating a bit more ferociously. Whatever it means, you basically will just, you, you'll go more confident and therefore aggressively pursue pleasure a little bit more than you are now, which is this tends to, does it work, you know? So those three limiting factors are really going to change and there's nothing you can do except wait it out, you know. So that's that bit out of the way. Um, overall, I would say the meeting with him was a little bit disappointing, I'll be honest with you. I think he's a he's a good doctor. He's very professional, right? And, and he takes his job seriously. But I don't think he has any interest whatsoever in the psychological aspects of what it does to a man when they have their foreskin removed. And actually, I feel society feels that way a little bit. I never used to give a shit about this. But I'm a little angry. I'm a little bit angry. I had, again, to reiterate, I had to get this done. And my choices, I didn't have choices here. But, you know, even my wife, she's a little flippant about it. And she's she's loving, you know. And, and as soon as I told her that, she was, oh, I'm so sorry you don't feel that way. You know, we have a very positive relationship. But... I feel that if we were talking, if I were to say, if she were to get her labia removed and then said, you know, I feel just weird. My vagina feels different. I'm like, it's like, I think there would be a lot more delicate. I think society in general would expect to be a lot more delicate. We'd be like, wow, that's big. What's happening to you is huge. That's your womanhood right there. Really feel for you. But when we take off a man's foreskin, we're like, yeah, all right. Just, you know, okay. So you've, you've lost 60, 70, 80% of your pleasure. All right, let's go on with it. It's annoying. It's annoying that we don't take the psychological aspects of it more seriously. I don't know why we do that. Because I, having been, now that I've been on both sides, 
limited by the fact I'm not fully healed, and hopefully that will change. Um, yeah, the pleasure is reduced immensely, and I don't think we really care, I think, as a society. We're like, well, we don't know. Uh, yeah, so no doubt I'd be telling my friends, I mean, I'm getting too old, and my friends are too old now, but I would be saying, yeah, I don't think you should get your kids circumcised. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Um, but I didn't know that. Now I do. Um, so I don't think he cared that much about it. So I told him I'm going to send him notes. <laughs> I'm so arrogant to say that, but I am. I'm just going to send him my notes. This is this is the psychological impact. These are the things that you didn't think about. You know, I mentioned to him about the phantom foreskin thing. He wasn't impressed. He was like, "Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I haven't I haven't heard that before." So I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who got that. I described it in detail. I'd say, like, you know, I'd be lying in bed trying to get to sleep and my foreskin would itch and I would go to scratch it and realize, oh, my God, I don't have a foreskin. And he was like, oh, man, no, I don't think I've heard that. Okay. So, again, I, I don't think, I think he's a he's a very physical doctor. He's not even remotely interested in the psychological aspects of what's going on. To me, that's fascinating. All I could think is I wish Oliver Sacks were here because I think Oliver Sacks would be fascinated by that. The fact that I can feel something that's just a flap of skin at the end. Um, but my doctor isn't. But I'm sending him notes. I'm going to tell him what I went through, how it feels, the progression week to week of how my attitude towards it has changed, how it was a lot more traumatic than I was led to believe. Um, he didn't, you know what, to be fair, my doctor didn't say this won't be traumatic. He just didn't really address it. It was just like, it's a procedure, it's fairly straightforward, and here are some options for you. But he didn't really impress on me the fact that, you know, some patients find this a little harder than others, and here's why. I don't think he cares about that stuff, so that's why. And I think he should, so I'm going to send him notes <laughs> to try and educate him a little bit better on it. Um, okay, so the white film over the, the, over the top, the thing that looks like skin but it's not, so there's an infection. I just tried to look it up and I can't find it. There's an inf infection you can get or a condition that you can get. And it's not like a gross infection. It's, it's just this, it looks like skin growing over the top. And if you have phimosis, there is a, a much higher chance of getting that infection. So that's one of the reasons why um, circumcision is recommended for phimosis is your chances of getting this infection are greatly increased, always. Right. So because you can't get under there to clean as well. Um, so he said, it may be that you had that. And I said, well, OK, what what do I do? He said, well, is it coming back? Is it are you having to break the, the seal, as it were, at the urethra? I said I had to do it twice. It might have been three times, but I saw him twice and that it hasn't happened for 10 days. And he said, well, that's a good sign. It might be going. He said, basically, you just need to keep an eye on it. Um, it was a little unclear about whether or not I had this thing or whether I will always now get this thing. And I kind of got the feeling he didn't know. But he didn't, he did make it clear that it's not a terribly important thing. It's not an awful thing. And it's not metal stenosis or whatever that, that is that kids get. It's slightly different from that. Um, so he just said, you need to keep an eye on it. I haven't had it for 10 days or maybe two weeks now. So I think I'm fine. You know, I think it's not going to come back. Um, he said, there's nothing you can do. I asked if there's any particular care I should be taking. I said, the, the other thing I'm going to send him in the notes is that he didn't tell me anything about what to do with a circumcised penis. I think in America, they just assume that everyone knows how to manage a circumcised penis. We don't. Why would I know that? Why, why would I know that? The, the only... People in my life who've ever had anything to do with, you know, educating about my penis when I was growing up. I was not in America when I was growing up. So, you know, it was uncircumcised. But I don't, I didn't know. I said, do I have to do anything? Should I be lubricating it? Should I be, he said, for sex, certainly. I said, no, not for sex. Just should I treat, is there a treatment process, you know, for cleaning under that little lip of foreskin I have? Or do I need to Vaseline it? Or should I give it warm bars? Is there anything you say? No, 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 none of that. So I guess there isn't anything that you're supposed to do with a circumcised penis. But again, and it, that might be true, but again, it was I was a little concerned about the fact that he just didn't really have any answer to that stuff. I feel like it needed a brochure. That's what it needs. I think we should walk into the urologists and he should be, when you say like, oh, you're going to get circumcised as an adult, here you go, here's the brochure. Here's the studies we've done. Here's the information that can happen. That doesn't exist. 
And I think it does exist for uh, a lot of other women's issues, but not for men's issues as if this isn't important. And I think it is important. Maybe, to be fair, maybe it's not important because not many adult men get circumcised. But then I feel that there should be a brochure about should you get your kid circumcised. And I didn't see that brochure either. Um, it's just become so commonplace that even my wife is like, she, she couldn't conceive of a world where that wasn't the best action. I'm like, well, what if you weren't in America? What if you weren't Jewish? Anyway, I don't want to get into that again. I've done that again. So I think this is the last video for a while. Sorry if I've rambled on a bit. Um, but uh, I will send, another, I'll do another video if anything changes. When I will figure out how to use this thing and maybe get a little bit better at it. And then uh, I will do another video. Or if anyone asks me very specific things they want addressed, then I'll do something like that. But other than that, I think this is uh, the last video for a while. It's healing up. 29 days, 4 weeks, 1 day. We're all good to go. I can go do whatever I want. I'm going to go out today with no pants on and show the world my circumcised penis. I'll see you in jail. Bye.